carnivores and herbivores, the two quote-unquote fractions of the dinosaur survival genre, each one providing a similar and yet distinct experience. Both are equally important to the game's diversity and its vision. They require the existence of one another in order to function properly and to deliver the kind of gameplay the Isle intends. But of course, being each side of the same coin comes with its differences, with both diets having their pros and cons that appeal to certain kinds of audiences, and sometimes that asymmetry tends to lead in favor of one side of the spectrum. In the past, the Isle had a severe bias towards the carnivorous portion of the roster, a topic that I addressed in detail before. And while that bias is not as intense in every meta moment, there are still signs that in the future the same problem might reappear the more dinosaurs are added. However, one question that wasn't addressed until now was, should a particular diet have an advantage in the first place, and if so, which one should it be? Herbivores or carnivores? Obviously the answer isn't that simple, otherwise it wouldn't still be a question to begin with. So in order to do it, we need to carefully analyze both the diet's differences and the game in specific, because depending on the title's main premise, the result may differ drastically. Despite its sci-fi horror theme, the Isle's gameplay is heavily focused on realism and immersion. Its numerous mechanics influence players to adopt a very specific way of play depending on their dino. The game wants players to behave and act like wild animals, so together they can form a cohesive, believable and engaging ecosystem. The way diets work, the way nesting works and migration as well in the near future all contribute to that immersive experience. But for this particular question, we cannot base our conclusion solely on that, because at the end of the day, the Isle is still a game, and inherently, the game must make sure that everyone who plays it has fun equally. Now, the concept becomes infinitely more complicated the moment each playable element, in this case the dinosaurs, possess exclusive attributes and requirements, and therefore it is not possible to use the same solution for all of them. Despite those details going down to each individual species, we can generalize a bit and divide them into the two major diets. First, we have the herbivores. By default, these playables focus a lot more on defensive survival. Since their food is a stationary and abundant source, herbies don't need to either kill or compete for food, and as a result, their gameplay flow is a lot more relaxed and passive, only using violence whenever they are being targeted by a predator. Carnivores, on the other hand, get the majority of their food, and especially nutrients, from other players, having to fight and kill on a daily basis just to survive. There's a clear discrepancy between diets when it comes to difficulty, with the latter having to actively seek combat just to stay alive in comparison to the former. So to compensate that unbalanced nature, we should buff carnivores to make it even, right? Wrong. And here's why. While meat eaters do in fact need to hunt for food, hunting, aka combat in these games, are a crucial, fundamental and the most exciting part of the entire game. For all players, not just the ones who need to do so just to eat. Herbivores want to be hunted not because it is beneficial for them or because it is needed, they want to for the simple fact that it is fun. Being either for food, dominance or survival, fighting is extremely enjoyable no matter the context. That is the portion of the game players seek the most. It is not an advantage for herbivores not being forced to fight. They want to fight. If anything, they might want it even more than carnivores because they are not forced into combat as frequently as their counterparts. So buffing carnies for that reason is only giving a portion of the roster an unfair, unnecessary and unreasonable upper hand. But should one side be stronger than the other at all? To an extent both diets will find arguments to defend that they should be on average superior than the others in some way. 
Her bees will say that in real life plant eaters are usually stronger and tougher than their predators, and carnies will say bee eaters are designed to kill prey and therefore they should be more deadly or have access to more tools to hunt their prey. But the thing is, both are correct. We can see both points be accurate in the wild, so in theory the final answer should be no, right? There's one aspect in particular that I see rarely being mentioned every time this discussion surfaces, and that is numbers. Even though all species have specific group limits, herds in general tend to be numerically larger than carnivore packs, and I believe that right there is the main source of this entire debate. Particularly in Legacy, herds were the vast majority of the time pretty much untouched by most carnivores. No pack would even dare attempt hunting them. Even on servers with body down rule, groups of herbivores were really only disturbed by apex families exclusively and maybe by a big mid-tier pack during migrations, and even then that was extremely rare. In Ivrima, that was also tuned down quite a bit. Being a bit smaller and with the lack of apex herbies, herds don't have the punch they used to and as a consequence, carnivores of all sizes have a much more fair chance at succeeding a hunt. However, that isn't to say that difference in numbers doesn't exist anymore. In most cases, carnivores need to handle with 2 to 3 times more specimens than the size of their pack, which mathematically is unfair for meat eaters since most of the time their collective damage output will be smaller than the herds. So should we buff carnies then? No, that wouldn't work. Numerical advantage should always be an advantage, otherwise not only it would be useless to form herds, it would heavily punish herbivores that prefer to either play solo or that didn't find a group yet. The dinosaur stats are good as they are for the most part, and carnivores, if skilled enough, can consistently hunt herds at the moment. The true problem is the lack of incentive to do so. From the carnies perspective, it is a lot safer and cost effective to hunt other carnivores for the simple fact that they have to deal with lesser numbers and therefore less risk. Of course there are people that enjoy the thrill of hunting groups of herbivores, but that alone is not enough because even those who go the extra mile in doing so are not rewarded enough for the risk they are exposing themselves to every time they hunt herds. Diets do influence them to predate specific herbivores, that is true, but it's not really that effective at doing that since they have always an AI alternative to collect their preferred nutrients. So while the incentive is there, it is not strong enough to make herd hunting a consistent activity. But here's the problem, we can't full on force them either. Without the AI, less skilled or less confident carny players would severely struggle with its nutrition, so diets are doing their job right. We just need something extra on top of it, something that surpasses the risk involved. And that solution may already be in our way. The perk system is a mechanic announced years and years ago, going as far back as 2017 when Legacy was still being actively developed. As of right now, we don't know much about it, but what we do know is that we will gain access to perks throughout our growth cycle and we will be able to choose a selected few of those and build our dinosaur the way we want to. But what if we could expand perks just a tiny bit further? What if you could get perks not only during growth, but also upon completing certain tasks? If we added a system that whenever a player completes an activity, like hunting or nesting for example, they could get some sort of experience that accumulates every time the task is complete, and once an arbitrarily threshold would be fulfilled, players would get access to a unique perk that they can only get access to if they participate in that activity enough times, and perhaps that perk in particular would even help the carnivore perform better at the task that gave them the perk in the first place. Utilizing the perk system this way would not only increase the mechanics depth, but also aid the ecosystem at large by giving extra rewards to players by behaving in a manner they are intended to behave 
with herd hunting as an example. The devs probably thought about this already, but to my knowledge they didn't showcase any extra tangible information about it as of yet, so we will have to wait until that happens. Once it does, you can count on me making a video about it, so stay tuned for that. A huge thank you for my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and the content I create. If you want to join the ranks, you can do so for only $1 a month, the link will be in the description. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and opinions down below, join our Discord server for memes and Pilarinet stuff, and I hope to see you all next week.